which is clay idols, which is clay idols. When the Lord Jesus Christ fully possesses us, we become uh, we become godly idols. Well, brethren, there there are idols in the Scripture. How about the the the, uh, the cherubim on top of the ark? Did you ever wonder about that? With such a strong prohibition against idols for Israel. How does how does how was how was Moses told to make two two cherubim on top of the ark? Because there is such a thing as a godly idol. See, and we we made of clay. We are all idols. If you can. Just get your brain to think about it. It's obvious we're idols, but we're walking and talking idols. We're not made of stone and wood. That's how you can idolize friends or family members because we are idols. If we're inhabited by, okay, uh, the fallen Adam, in other words, if the relationship that we have on you, with you, with each other, is based upon the dependency and the lusts of the fallen Adam, we have to be very careful that we don't that we're not worshiping the idols of the, of the people in, in, our, in our lives. And I think we all do that. Before we come to God, we all worship the idols in our lives. Children worship their parents. Husbands worship their wives. Sometimes wives worship their husbands. Worship fathers, mothers. We, we worship people. And that may be a little difficult for people to understand, but it's the truth. We worship people because our eyes are on the circle of the earth, and the Lord is trying to get us to look up that we should stop sinning. And dependency is worship. So this is the second time I'm talking about dependency in this message. Dependency is worship. And the person you're dependent upon is an idol in your life. That may be hard to understand. No matter how dependent, let's say your, your body breaks down. And you say, well, what am I supposed to do? I can't help myself. God forbid you can't walk or you can't have the basic needs met. I need somebody else. What, what do you mean Jesus will meet my every need? If you have that faith of that degree, Jesus will send people to help you so that you will not be idolizing the people. If you actually believe, if you actually believe, that God is able to take care of you. And, and in order to believe that, you really need to understand that he takes care of you by sending other people to you. So to think that I want to be dependent only on God, and that means I can't walk, my legs don't work, but I'm going to be able to walk because I need to get to the doctor, and I want to be de dependent only on God, that's wrong thinking. That's completely wrong thinking. God doesn't fix your your paralysis so that you can get to the doctor, but he will send someone to take you. And now it's your responsibility to understand that it's not the person that, that you, that's taking you, but that God sent that person to take you. Therefore, he still gets all the glory. So it's, what we're talking about is the basis of our relationships. If there's someone in your life that helps you, me, okay, if I help you, you're supposed to respect me and honor me because I, I, I study the Word of God and I teach you and I sacrifice for you. But you need to never lose sight of the fact that it is the Lord Jesus Christ through me providing your needs. Otherwise, you become guilty of worshiping me. And, and the Lord will help you if you truly desire it, if you can hear what I'm saying, and you desire it, the Lord will help you to strike that balance of understanding that I am the Lord's gift to you, but you can never forget that he's, that the invisible, that the, the invisible God who's ministering to us through the invisible Christ Jesus right now is the sole, sole, absolute sole source of your supply. Since I'm a mortal person, I could, disap I could disappear sitting right in front of you. Maybe I'd be raptured. <laughs> That's a bad joke. I could disappear right in front of you, God forbid. God forbid. I'm hoping for longevity. You, you can never lose sight of the fact that it is the Lord Jesus Christ who has provided me for you. It is the Lord Jesus Christ that puts, foods in the, puts food in the supermarket. It's the Lord Jesus Christ that gives you a skill that lets you get a job. It's the Lord Jesus Christ that, that makes your mind and your body uh, eligible to drive the car that he's given you. He's, he, we, we owe him for everything that we have. 
nothing is coming to us. We're not entitled to anything. We're not entitled to see, to hear, to speak, to understand. We're not, we're, not, we're not entitled to anything. We breathe. Every breath we take is his grace for us. And the people that he sends to meet our needs are his gift to us. So we appreciate them because they're cooperating with God to do what he's telling them. And hopefully they have a right heart towards us. But don't ever lose sight of the fact that God is your provider 100%. You have to find that balance. If you want the best that God has to offer, both in your relationship with him and your relationship with other people, you have to find that balance.